That's true. Every day, though, they got to wait. So, like, sometimes they come in when you're doing the... Uh, no, I know they got to wait, but usually yeah, there's a the little spiel. thing that's like, hey, we're getting started in about five minutes. <laughs> oh, man. All right. It's Redemption Thursday. We take a deep breath. We're all good to go. I had a, I had a fun early morning doing a preview for the Arkansas-Texas game, by the way. Uh, just because they've sold out there at Arkansas for the first time in four years, they have not sold out there. Wu Pig Suey is pumped for this game. Is that wow? In four years, yeah, they haven't sold out in four years in this first time. Well, think about the level of suck that Arkansas has gone through. Um, uh, it's not unlike uh, Doe Campbell Stadium, it's not like that place is selling out every other day, uh, with the with the ass sorry product we've produced. So, we, you know, a lot of teams throughout the country are in a similar position. Uh, Texas and Arkansas and Florida State and schools trying to fight their way back to prominence. And it's, it's, I mentioned this on yesterday's show that it's interesting to talk to other fan bases or, or people who cover these other teams to get a sense of what their fans are hoping for, expecting, where they are in the process of uh, rebounding. It's hard for us this week because this is a game that is, you know, Obviously, Jacksonville State is not a competitive football game, and it's we're on the heels of a, a game that everybody was uh, excited to see and ready to buy into and jump in, and they did, but it also created, because of when it was, a short week. So it's just this, everything feels hurried. Everything feels, um, you know, I, I don't know. It, it, it Compressed. Well, not just compressed. I just don't know how many people we're going to, I'm a little, I think we're going to be a little disappointed. We're, for, we're, do for a huge letdown in terms of the there will be more people though because it's an 8 p.m kick oh yeah you if had it was a nooner yet. or oh, 3 30 no you no have chance. like 12 people yeah you'd have no chance uh if it had been a nooner uh the fact that they do it at night is is nice um and I, you know one thing about these games that i learned a long time ago is that uh, it is a chance within the community a lot of free tickets, a lot of tickets given away to, to kids who couldn't otherwise go to the game. I know because my wife works in the school system. That's something Florida State does. Uh, I know of other uh, networks of people, groups of people that work in uh, different facilities that uh, have an opportunity this weekend to take. Could be old people, could be young people, could be people who are displaced for whatever reason uh, to this game. So that part of it is is nice. All right, I'll get to Florida State's practice in a second. But it is Redemption Thursday, and we got off to a – incredible start and that usually uh doesn't bode well for this week bend over yeah it doesn't we did we had such a good run it's rare that vegas takes it on the chin two weeks in a row and and gets buried but it's impossible not to have speaking of which huge expectations when you get off to that start i think we went eight and one last week and redemption thursday seven and one whatever it was so i got these bad boys out are you ready with the siren? Oh, really? Okay. Well, there's a See, couple. I'm going in blind here, so I will. I'm like the fans. I'm like the listeners and the viewers. If I hear anything strange, the siren will be broken out. Get ready, everybody. I do see where uh, we had a couple people make mention of some of my other games. Redemption Thursday, that plus 400 Utah to win Pac-12 South, going to look real good after their win at BYU this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, they'll win that game at BYU. You're right. Abdel calling for it in the Holy War. BYU has got some offensive line issues, which is surprising for uh, a school that usually houses 30-year-old men. That's but, correct. You know, yes, it's kind yes. of surprising to see that. Off uh, their mission trips. Yeah. I know that uh, Jason, uh, excuse me, Sean, I know that Jacksonville State was uh, competitive for a half last year. And, uh, hey, lots of teams were very competitive, overly competitive, <laughs> way too competitive against Florida State last year. Uh, a lot of teams that had no business being competitive against Florida State, let alone winning. Uh, we're very much in the game or running away with the game against Florida State. We'd like to believe this year is a different year, and I, I do think it will be. I think this will be workmanlike for Florida State. It's impossible to find a number on this game, by the way. I looked everywhere. I, I know in uh, a, a mutual pool that we're in, they just made up a number, I think, at 25 and a half. I don't know where that Ooh, came what from. What a discount. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll take that. Lock it. Yeah. But I also think it could be one of those boring 37 to 10 type games, 37, 13 type games. We kind of go through and I, I, I wonder they're not going to show a lot. Wake is really important. We've stressed this, the game against wake is really important. I wouldn't show a lot. I, I would just be bigger, stronger, faster and go about my 
business that way and get a lot of guys in. I'd want a lot of reps for a lot of the young guys. I'd like to give guys opportunities. Extra touches for Toa Feely, DJ Williams. Yeah, man. Yeah. Everybody's going to get their quarterbacks. Yeah, yeah. Everybody gets to play. We're mm -hmm. all playing. We out had a here very today. good plan for today. We were looking to make sure we got extra reps for Chubba and Tate. That's what you want to hear. You wanted, wanted a full evaluation. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. load management for some other guys. Deload yeah, yeah. day. Deload Saturday. I have a lot of it. All right, here you go. Redemption Thursday wagers. It's a bounce back weekend for the ACC. NC State goes on the road to SEC country and tells Mississippi State to suck it. Give the two and a half right off the bat. Like it. I like can feel it all the way down in my plum. Yeah, I do. I do. I like that one. Uh, I've been on NC State. I'll stay with the ACC. Give me Pitt on the road. Come on, Narduzzi. Don't you mess this up. Against Tennessee, uh, this should be fun. You took the number. Oh, I see a lot of people betting the total, but you actually took Pitt. I took Pitt. I, I think right. Pitt wins, and I think Pitt may win comfortably, Tom. I can feel it all the way down in my plums. So there you go. That's two ACC wins over two SEC teams on the road. What a statement for Packer and Durham. There it is. It'll be in the C block well, after lacrosse and soccer coverage on Monday. The whole country fell over themselves trying to kick the ACC in the balls, and I'm like, hey, guys. Hey, it's week one. Well, it, right. ha it happens. We're off and running. I meant to say boys. I meant to say boys, but you know, I mean, good God, everybody. In the footballs, people. Yeah, can we settle down In a little bit? In the footballs, here? everybody calm down. Thanks, Eric, as always. Um, yeah, so there you go. I like it. Now, Woo! Iowa plus four and a half. Your chance to speak, Tom, versus Iowa State in the Cyhawk game. Now, the key here is uh, a couple of things, and I, I'm i worried a little bit on this bet. I felt better about it earlier in the week than I feel about it today. It just did not move under three. I got copious notes here. Uh -oh. uh, I want you to know. Well, one of my problems is the more I watch Spencer Petras, uh, the more I think you're not good. That's the quarterback for Iowa, Tom. And he's uh, not good. He's not good. Uh, he was uh, – average at best now they play good defense and they run the ball and you're catching more than a field goal i'm catching more than a field goal so i'm gonna do it i'm gonna take iowa i'm gonna get my four and a half and i'm gonna hold on but you're not feeling it all the way down in your plums not the way i was feeling it earlier in the week okay. i could all see right. iowa state who looked terrible against northern iowa i could see them bouncing back they are desperate to get this win game day is there the atmosphere will be intense it's one of the games i'm really excited to watch it'll be a very physical game uh, Matt Campbell has never won this game. He's over. He's so never far. won the Cyhawk Trophy. That's correct. He's never won the Cyhawk Trophy. The under has played thirteen and two in the last fifteen meetings. Mm. Iowa has won the last five games, as I mentioned. Uh, it's the first time Iowa has been an underdog in this game since two thousand. The first time they've been the underdog in the Cyhawk game <laughs> since two thousand. I mean, if you're Iowa State, you're like Jesus, what are we doing around here? It's not like Iowa is Ohio State. Can we get it together? William, wait. I don't I know it's kickoff time, but I got to see the finish of the Cyhawk <laughs> game. It's a classic. All right, give me the over in the Mizzou Kentucky game. You guys listened to me last week and you were on the over with Kentucky. Mark Stoops, I see you, buddy. I appreciate you very much going for that late touchdown. We were at the corner pocket bar and yes, grill. Yes, we were. Good atmosphere. That touchdown went in. It seemed like innocuous to most. And then in one little corner, one little pocket of corner pocket was this guy going, Woo! And that's when you know it's gambling season, baby. A lot of people turn around. They're saying, yeah. What's going on? Yeah. Oh, Campster hit another one. Yeah, that's touchdown, Kentucky. <laughs> touchdown, Wildcats. I can feel it all the way down <laughs> in my plums. <laughs> Uh, I like both those quarterbacks to throw the football around the lot a little bit there. So that should be a fun game. And uh, give me the over in that game. Uh, I also took the under 49 Washington in Michigan this week. Okay. All right. Michigan's best receiver out for the year. That's not good. Washington does play defense. Ain't going to light it up on the scoreboard. I know the trends say over. I say nay, nay. The public is wrong. We're going under 49 right here. Buck those trends, right? Always. Hey, this will surprise you. Another big win for the ACC. Syracuse is catching points against Rutgers. Come on, Cuse. I got you. I can feel it all the way down in my plums. Nice win for Syracuse last week against Ohio. They were underdogs. That's right. They fought off the Bobcats. Won by multiple scores. Dino Baber said, not yet. Not yet. You can't get rid of me that easy. Give me Q's plus two. 
Uh, Oregon and Ohio State, I have no interest in betting the uh, the winner in this game, which will be Ohio State. Uh, I, I instead will go over 63. I'm going to go over 63. I think we light it up on the scoreboard. Here. Okay, that makes sense. Ohio yeah. State's defense was a little shaky in game one, so yeah, I, I see they, you working. There's speed there for Oregon, and I'll, I'll go that route. I don't uh, – by the way, we, you go back to that pit game for a second where I gave the two and a half points to Tennessee. If you're a Vols fan listening to this, God bless you, first of all. But secondly, I would just tell you this. Joe Milton can't play. He can't play. You know, sometimes early in the year when you're just wading out in the waters to see how new coaches, new programs, new teams look with their new personnel, you, you want to you take a look at the quarterback position. Probably a wise idea. You want to see how are they at quarterback. That's a key most days. Man, Michigan's not worried at all that Milton is not there. He's terrible. I watched that game against Bowling Green because that's what I do. And I got to tell you, Tom, that guy sucks. Yeah, he Tennessee is. game against Bowling Green, yeah. Yeah, what did I say? Michigan. Well, he was at Michigan. He transferred yeah, to yeah, Tennessee. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I can understand that, yeah, too. Yeah, 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 you yeah, know, yeah. you're talking about crappy football, Michigan, Tennessee. Right, same right, right, difference. Yeah. Crappy quarterback same play, same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. I meant, uh, he was awful. He's a Michigan transfer. Uh, he went 9 of 11 in the first quarter, and they're humming. Hit some big passes. You're like, Heupel's offense. They're going to score 60 points. It's Bowling Green, one of the worst football programs in the country. And I'm like, oh, well, this is easy. Now, I got lucky here with the cover because they tried to blow that this from the first after the first quarter. My man was two of 13 in the remaining three quarters Ooh. and sacked three times and fumbled. No, no, I didn't get it done. When Bowling Green makes an adjustment and shuts All you right. down, we got issues. So then you're playing the picket. You're playing the picket oh, fence yeah, well, offense. You know picket I, fence you, offense. Yeah, you know I That's like right. him. Lord knows. Yeah, he likes, Kenny Pickett's a good player. He also likes us, doesn't he? Um, so that's, Ooh, my ankle feels better. Yeah. Look at this secondary. I get to play Florida State. Uh, okay, real quick, give me the uh, Cal TCU under. Real big on the Cal TCU under 48 here. That's not a siren. That's still power five. All right, I see you. Well, here's one for you. Air Force minus six versus Navy. <laughs> I can feel it all the way down. <laughs> if you're watching the interactive here, on the, that is good. That is good. Wow, what a surprise. We got that in. That is good. Oh, man. Air Force minus six versus Navy. There you go. <laughs> That's a look. Oh, one NFL game. Director Matthews, Redemption Thursday. Here you go, buddy. I took the Eagles plus three and a half against the uh, Atlanta Falcons. Three and a half there. Going with the Eagles. Going with the Eagles. Well, I get three and a half. That's a three. These two teams, garbage. All right. You don't think Matty Ryan's going to go down the field with Kyle Pitts and Calvin Ridley? Yeah, a few times. Nothing big. They, they suck. Okay. That's a garbage. Who's Atlanta starting club. for Philly? Is it going to be Hurts? Unfortunately. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. If it was Minshew, maybe I would be in agreement with you. But Give me the three and a half. Philly keeps it close. First game of the year. I mean, three and a half. I had to sprinkle an NFL game in. I don't like any of them, man. I don't. You don't like the Bucks tonight? Minus the whatever it is it's, now? It's up to eight. Whatever it is, it's up. It's over a touchdown. It is. Yeah. Is uh, it nine, nine and a half? I saw. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. I think they'll clobber Dallas, but I don't. First games, man. First games in the NFL. They're always a little weird. I don't have a, I don't have a good feel for anything just yet. If Zeke can run tonight, that would be a shocker. Well, I agree with that. I, if he is able to run, I would be stunned, and that would be a problem, by the way. If they are able to run, they do have weapons on the edges, so that would create a real issue for us uh, because I still, no matter how well that secondary played in the last six games last year, that is still an area that you're going to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're missing Jordan Whitehead, too, yeah. who's always injured. Yeah. Always. A really good player when he's not. Oh, he is. But, yeah, you worry about that a little bit, uh, so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, why did Clemson, writes Karen, Get a pass in the polls. We were always sitting downward when we were in the top 10. Makes me furious. Well, I don't worry about the rankings just yet. They did drop, didn't they? Now that was like six or something. Yeah. They had a break. They lost. It's funny. Them. I don't look at the AP or the coaches' yeah. poll anymore because we're never in it. You don't look at the coaches' poll? No, no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how you turn to stone. Uh, Maybe a pillar of salt. Uh, what I what I would tell you is that uh, there's no shame in losing by seven to Georgia and not give up a single offensive touchdown. Who, uh, again, that, that's a battle of two 
very elite defenses. And uh, that game came down to the fact that Clemson simply cannot block Georgia. And if they play again, they won't be able to block Georgia uh, because this is the problem for dear Clemson. Their offensive line amongst the elite teams in the country is the poorest of those that have a chance to win the national championship. And that means if you're a Clemson fan, you're a little bothered because that ain't going to get better. Uh, at least from a matchup standpoint, no, if, if no. you were to play, say, Alabama or Georgia again uh, or Ohio State's front. Not yeah, unless you can fast track a freshman or something along those lines. Well, they have freshmen in there. That is part of the problem. And he did have a uh, a tough go of it. Got to have more, though, like Big Rod Johnson, remember? <laughs> Big Rod Johnson was a big-time difference in 2014. I love this question because it brings us back to FSU, whom I'm going to talk about when we get into the second segment. But uh, this question. Jalen writes, do you guys think we're ranked in the top 25 after we beat Louisville? And that is, of course, presuming an easy victory this weekend and then another victory, uh, obviously. I think uh, if you beat Wake first. I believe he's supposing that, yes. And then follow it up with a win over Louisville, you might have a shot to be ranked because I think a lot of eyes were opened, and I don't necessarily care about being ranked right now. A lot of guy uh, eyes were opened by the performance of Florida State. Uh, it, that includes if you look at the national shows. You know, I heard Herb Street Herb Street talk about us at length. Uh, I heard uh, two or three. I can't remember all. I don't need to mention them all, but just right. flipping around. I, Every national show that talked about Florida State said, "Hey, now." Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they they opened eyes. This is part of what we talked about, Tom, at the beginning of the summer, which was. If you embrace that this takes longer than you'd like it to because a rebuild does, you can't just flip the roster because you want it flipped. You have to go through the process of getting yeses, having commits, stick to those commits, and then do enough on the field to yield that result, right? To give yourself momentum uh, within the, the, the recruiting circles, et cetera. If you accept that you're, you're wanting to see viable progress Proof of, uh, not concept, because that's getting overused these days. I want to go away from that. But, yes, that helps too. But proof that the guys have bought in and they're working together and that the coaching staff is doing a good job of managing their personnel, understanding what they do or do not have. I'll give you a good example of this. Kind of like proof of concept. Here's a good example. Mike Norvell obviously knows what he can and cannot call based on what that offensive line can and cannot do. And you see that it's you see that in the play calling. There's a lot of trick them to what we're doing, followed by shot plays. We're a tricky, tricky, tricky shot play. That's what we do. That's a good song. That's that's what we do. This is not a classic. We are bigger and better and stronger, and I'm not going to disguise anything. Here it comes. Get you some. That's not what we do. Also a good song. Yeah, that's not what we do here. That's the B side. Mm. What we do here is a whole lot of, hey, look at this. Look at all this over here. Oh, look at that creeping on up now. Woo! That's what we do. That's a terrible pop honky-tonk song. Yeah, that's an awful song. That's a current country music song. Uh, but that's kind of... Probably bumper for a lot of other shows here. That's that's yeah. kind of where we're at, right? That's We cannot do certain things. But I like knowing that because... Or I like that Mike knows that more importantly. I like that the way we call plays suggests there's a real grasp of the personnel, a real understanding. Now, that could change. That could change with a healthy McKenzie Milton uh, and, and, and perhaps a quick passing game and maybe you develop a drop-back passing game, something like that. You may see a difference in play calling uh, if, in fact, he becomes the regular starter. But in the interim... There are just certain things they can't do. Well, can I interject that maybe you can run some get you some plays against teams not named Notre Dame or Clemson? That's one thing that I'm really interested to see against Wake Forest, yeah, Louisville, line Syracuse, whatever. I mean, you know, you probably should be able to. But in years past, it didn't matter who the other defensive line was. FBS, FCS. Correct. Correct. Did not matter. Yeah. Couldn't do it. When we when they took a segment from the Jeff Cameron show and played it on college yeah, game day, right, that's right. when I was bitching about we couldn't block Samford. Samford. That was a big win for Nice Tire and Auto that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember I'm like, we can't block Samford. They this did not ask our permission to do that to the ESPN. No. They just did it. They just did it. But it was funny. But it was true. Desmond Howard was like, I like that guy. Yeah. We can't block Sanford. <laughs> They're screwed. They couldn't block Sanford. That was a that was a toughie. 
So let's hope this weekend they can man up and block Jacksonville State and and kind of impose their will. Which, oh by the way, I think I think they will, guys. This is a. <laughs> I, I guess I'm going back to my original point before we get a break, which was that if you embrace all of those things that I just talked about, about the process and about, you know, seeing signs, evidence of growth and all that, then what you get excited about are these little gains from really solid efforts like the national TV college football analysts of the world pointing out that Florida State looks different. That's these are little things. You don't need that. You don't need their validation to to feel better about yourself. What I'm saying is when something like that happens, it's a reminder. These are little check marks along the way. Like, see, see, now here we go. Oh, yeah. There's growth here. This is fun. Like we do this with other teams all the time. You give them a reason, we'll become a darling again in the eyes of the national media. Well, they and it's, it's been a dog's age. It's good for football when Florida State, good for college football when Florida State matters immensely. Uh, it is a Iconic brand. Oh, yes. With this offense built for playmakers, the physicality, the passion, the service. Remember, this is built on service as well. Russell writes, high country or hill country? High country, Russell. Yeah, hill country is in Texas. High country is the High country. It's Jeff Cameron, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Happy Redemption Thursday, everybody. Hey, no fans. Our partner, ISF Inc., is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state government, including public health and emergency response agencies, our friends at ISF recognize September as National Preparedness Month and want to help you be safe this hurricane season. Visit ISF.com to learn more and download your emergency preparedness plan today. ISF, solving the future. Every great construction project, whether it's a new addition or renovation, starts with a plan. At T-Spark, we are excited when our clients contact us to assist with that plan. Through our team of architects, draftsmen, engineers, we can help you with your project's planning and design, potentially saving costs in the long run. Whether you have a residential or commercial project, we look forward to working with you. Call us today or visit us at tsparkconstruction.com. License number CGC 1525336. This is Patty Wilson. Oh, I'm sorry. We're ready. <laughs> He's recording. I, why are you always saying your last name? I it's Patty and Scott. Everybody I knows don't know that. Patty and Scott. I don't know. This is Patty Wilson. No, this is. I am Patty Wilson. <laughs> what is the idea behind said promo? It's for Patty's Playhouse. We're on Patty's Playhouse Saturdays at 11. Tune in. That's stupid. Just tune in. Saturdays at 11. Patty Wilson, Patty's Playhouse. House talk with a happy ending. Each and every time. <laughs> Maximizing your Social Security benefits isn't something they want you to know how to do. Many people are unaware of unused benefits that are owed to them. Hi, this is Craig Collins from Collins Income Tax Solutions. And if you're wondering whether or not your Social Security is going to be there for you, I can help. Contact me today to schedule a free consultation to learn how we can help maximize your Social Security benefits. You can find me online at Collins Income Tax Solutions, LLC.com. That's Collins Income Tax Solutions, LLC.com. Hi, this is the legendary Mary Bush Smith inviting you to tune in every Sunday morning from 8 to 9 o'clock a.m. for Sunday Morning Gospel. We will feature our sponsor, TLC Chiropractic, Dr. Gregory Eisman, 850-222-5700. Where is the best place to find Michelin, Firestone, Dunlop, Goodyear, and Bridgestone Tires? Nice Tire and Auto Service. Where is the best full-service auto center? Nice Tire and Auto Service. They do everything from computerized alignments to brakes, tune-ups, and safety inspections. Where can you get complete auto service you can trust? At Navy. Nice Tire and Auto Service. 4792 Bluntstown Highway, just west of Capitol Circle. Applications, onboarding, payroll, termination. Business owners and managers, you know these are the processes that take away too much time from what you do best. But what if there was a locally owned, responsive solution that would charge you a fraction of the big national payroll companies? Sound too good to be true? 
it's not. North Florida Payroll Services is Tallahassee owned for nearly 15 years. And in that time, their prices have never changed. The reason North Florida Payroll Services can do that? Exceptional customer service that constantly evolves with the latest technology. From application to termination, for turnkey service for your payroll and HR services, trust a Tallahassee expert and save yourself time and money. North Florida Payroll Services, online at NorthFloridaPayroll.com. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. All We have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers here on 93.3 Real Talk Radio. That's right. It's going to be a long night for the Cowboys. <laughs> I wonder how many people get that reference from Oklahoma State. Yeah, it's an old Mike Gundy video from 2014. It's that a started great video. It's one of my all-time favorites. The Cowboy Classic, and he's doing whiteboard stuff for, I think it's the actual university, the athletic department yeah. put these videos together. <laughs> and he, There are like four or five plays he shows. They're all touchdown plays. It's another touchdown for the Cowboys. <laughs> And then, he says it yeah. with that little effeminate touch. It's yeah. Great. Yeah. And there was like, there's one that wasn't a touchdown. It was another big play for the Cowboys. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not a touchdown, but he works it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Uh, I guess I would tell you some plays for tonight's uh, Bucks Cowboys games would probably be Ronald Jones over 48 and a half yards rushing. Okay. I'll take that play. If you want some props, I got some props for you. Uh, you could turn the Bucks into a two team teaser or a three team teaser. Uh, I've been looking at teasers because I love teasers, teasers, pleasers. Te uh, you know, how <laughs> you know how I feel about those. I, I get excited with these. I forgot about you in the NFL. My defenses were not up. Yeah, the <laughs> yeah there's McConaughey. Teaser, pleaser. Yeah, he just yeah, made another appearance. Yeah. There <laughs> so you could you could tease the Bucks down to minus two, cross those important numbers. Yep. Anytime okay. he brings up a teaser, henceforth, be ready on the McConaughey. Yeah. You can yeah, put yeah. it up again for the people if they missed it. Yeah. A little teaser, pleaser. Uh, there you go. It's just so good. Minus two, and then you could take. Uh, He's sweating out the third leg. That you know, <laughs> three team teaser pleaser. <laughs> Come <Ooh>. on! <laughs> but he's watching. He's watching Jets and and Raiders last year. Yeah, 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 on the deep ball. Yep. <laughs> Greg Williams, I love you. you. Beautiful son of a yes. yes. <laughs> But you could grab the Rams and tease that down to under two as well. Ooh, all right. Teaser, pleaser. All of a sudden, you're feeling very comfortable. That all you need basically is a Bucks win and a Rams win. Oh, Tom likes the way I sound I, today. I, yeah. He's, he's like, yeah, that sounds, sounds good. Your attention to detail on the numbers <laughs> has gone up a lot over the years, but it's been an exponential rise. It's like the algorithm in social media and YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Once you hit a certain watermark, it's uh -huh. just to the moon, man. That's been you this year. We're getting there, baby. Putting in work all day, every day. I'm going to tell you all time. day, every day. Yeah, that's right. Hey, student section, good on you. I saw Florida State uh, tweeted out that the student section is already sold out. Good to go. Okay. The last time the Let's student go, section kids. did. Go. Oh, so in 2011, I had a memory pop up on my social media account the other day, memory. Yep. and it said, way to go, students, because it was like Charleston Southern in 2011, and the student section sold out ahead of time. And I said, way to go, students. And what was that a precursor to? Much better times. Mm -hmm. So hopefully there's a correlation in that theory. At Jay Cambridge on Twitter, that's what it is. Christopher writes, we need a positive note of the day for the football program. How about points scored against top 10 teams for this entire season so far? 
FSU versus Clemson. No wait, the entire ACC. FSU has scored 38 points against top 10 teams. The ACC combined has scored 33 points outside of Florida State. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he's he's throwing in the old school positive, used to be positive basketball note of the day. Speaking of which, spoke with Chuck Walsh this morning. And uh, I, I listen, you got to keep it moving. You got to make things happen. I was just getting a little update on the basketball program. Hey, two months from now, they're playing yeah, an exhibition game. I, know. I was just weighing in, trying to get a feel for how we're looking over there, how we're feeling, how's everybody doing, how's Ham's, how's the Houston kid? Yeah, how's Ham's uh, foot doing, his knee and all that. How's everything going? I'm just checking on everybody. Yeah, bro- oh yeah, yeah but he broke it. He tore his Achilles. What do you mean? I would think. Okay, I would yeah. think he'd be on the mend now. Well, is that's he? a. I, mean, I know he's not young. I know, and you can't just tear your. Achilles he's got that tiger like, blood of a 35 year old. Oh, he's amazing, but you know when you fall at that age. <laughs> Don't say that to him. <laughs> no, grab me by the throat. Love you, Ham. He's traveling on the road today. He's 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 busy. You know we have the capability now to do that long overdue show from the facility. It's much easier to do now. Now that we with have our current the, setup, well, and we also have that really nice That's equipment correct. that we could do. I'm, all we need I'm, is yeah, yeah we don't because the old device was like it it set off all types of alarms in these facilities. Like I remember when we went to Jerry's World. They're like, what the hell is this? We oh, need to give pe- a specific permission because it's flagged on all of our firewalls. That's interesting. Yeah, they well, did though. They had the they had the means to do it. The uh, the most impressive thing about Jerry's World all those years ago when we went there and beat Oklahoma State in a game that should have signified just how much trouble we were perhaps going to be in. Mm-hmm. Um, ridiculous. But uh, when when that happened, I can still remember uh, you telling me that uh, well we we've, we've had to jump through hoops, but these people behind the scenes are the best I've ever dealt with, and they were oh, remember yeah. that that was insane. It was absurd. Greatest internet of all time. Yep, a lot of their technology. Like, rooms, quite literally, they were celebrating the fact that they were the best internet of. All time. <laughs> they were the no. They were talking about like, come see. I'm like, yeah. well, it's it's just a box with lights on it's it. Just, like, come on, you're come just on. tell me how fast this is. That's we great. I believe a, you. I trust you. A terabyte of nanosecond. Yeah. I'm like, okay. They, they're all like, go ahead, try this, try this. I, I got it. I got it. No, look, look at that. Look at, it. it's look at our speed test. Yeah, it's it's it breaks done. it. It breaks it. <laughs> we're gonna break the speed net. Yeah. That's uh, again was kind of kind of funny, but uh, it was useful. Yeah, very useful. Oh, the blood and guts rooms where they had all the stuff for the technology looked like an Intel commercial. It was like, what is this? Well, you know, I'm glad we got to do that because, as I said, this is probably Jerry Jones' last season. So let's everybody oh, make wow. sure that <laughs> you mention it tomorrow. I'll throw the hat in the air. It'll be a hatter. Oh my goodness gracious! It is weird and odd and difficult. Um, to to welcome back the NFL on a Redemption Thursday because I'm so immersed as you are and I am and everybody else is into the college game. And, the, you know, Redemption Thursday is mostly all college today. But after this week, you'll have a much better feel for where people are. Yeah, I had a hard time in our uh, super contest. We have a mock super contest that's kind of like the one they do in Vegas where you look at the entire slate, you pick any five games you want against the number. It, wasn't, five. it wasn't very easy. I got to like two and I was like, um... I don't know. <laughs> well, it'll make you better because what will end up happening is you're going to have to find these, like, pull up that Hawaii game. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's a good game for you to look at this week, everybody. It's the number 11. That is the number, Tom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like right. that number. It's like a pretty good number. Yeah, I like that number. Yeah, so that's my point. That's You, you have to go outside the box and find value and find the value elsewhere. Growth opportunities. Yeah, there are real growth opportunities here. All right, I promise. <laughs> I can feel it all the way down in my plums. Uh, I promise we will get to FSU in a minute. A minute. There's just not a lot for me to report Jacksonville State week, guys. I did like listening to Dillingham yesterday. You know, I don't spend a lot of time on ifollowthekitties.com in terms of the recruiting updates. I do, I do care that Julian Armella is still talking about FSU. That's uh-huh. important. That's very important. I'm paying attention to that. Well, there are a couple of kids that like Miami, and they won't in about six weeks' time. And what are we going to do about it? That would be my number one question. And you can get that question answered tonight on War Chant TV as there is a live recruiting well chat with done. Michael Langston and Aslan Hudrivandi. Hey, guys, when you do this, when you call in to Michael and uh, Aslan, uh, ask him two things. And I, because I want the answers, and I don't feel like calling in. Oh boy! So here's no. Ask him two After things. After our close yesterday, I'm nervous. No, now. don't be nervous. Ask him two things. Ask him how. Well, first of all, we're on Miami Quit Watch. 
because they got blown the hell out, humiliated in week one. And that's usually enough for them to pack it in and call it a day. So we'll see if they just, uh, Manny, you're not the guy. We know you're not the guy. We're, running out, we're playing out the string. If that happens good, we can start grabbing some of their recruits. But keep a close eye on what's happening at LSU as well. This could be the perfect storm, Tom Lang. Mm -hmm. This could be the perfect storm. You've got Ed Orgeron, who's on shaky ground, an LSU fan base that does not tolerate nonsense, a program that feels like it's on the precipice of failure, maybe a middling-type campaign at LSU, which is not going to get it done in Baton Rouge. That poor Uber driver is furious right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I he, thought we had turned the corner, he said. Yeah, that's exactly what he said. You missed your turn, Mr. Driver. So here's the deal. They're on guys. Miami's on guys. Guys that have already said yes to those two schools. Maybe they want to get with the upwardly mobile program, the one who is well coached and showing signs of prominence in this not so distant future. I want to know who you could pick off from those two schools, either current verbal commits or kids that are heavily involved with those two schools and are, are a Miami lean or an LSU lean, because surely there are at least three linebackers we could grab. So you know what's going to happen here is I think you're going to call as a ghost name or you're going to write a comment in as a ghost name because you want that question answered. Hey, Michael. Uh, actually, I have to do this. Hey, Michael. This is Jerry. That's, I knew uh, it. I'm just kind of wondering. What's Jerry's last name? Smith, I'm wondering if we could pick off, uh, maybe we could pick off a, a, a LSU or Miami linebacker who's looking to get with a real program, some program that's on the verge of playing much better football. That's my question. Thanks, Michael and Aslan. Yeah, there you go. Let's isolate that video yeah. and send it to him. <laughs> that's the question I want answered for that show tonight on WarChant.com. It's the Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio. Your local news now. Officials say a former police officer has been arrested on felony charges, accused of stealing nearly $50,000 from a police union while he was president. The former Claremont officer, Jeremy Kevitt, used money from the Claremont Police Officers Union of bank accounts without approval. The theft was discovered last November when overdraft notices came in. Investigators said that when they have confronted Kevitt, he was defensive and complained that he did not have help managing the account. Kevitt was arrested Friday on charges of grand theft and organized fraud. The Supreme Court this week allowed a strict new abortion law in Texas. Florida Republicans are expected to push for similar legislation. The Texas measure bans abortions after six weeks of pregnancy, which is before most women know they're pregnant. Last week, Florida Senate president said the legislature is already working on its own bill. Although Texas is a more populous state, Florida has higher abortion rates, the second highest in the nation. This is Rachel Lene with your Real Talk 93. Probably with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Sunshine mixed with clouds at times this afternoon with a chance for scattered thunderstorms. Daytime highs approaching 87. West winds 8 to 15 miles per hour. Chance for scattered storms tonight. Lows level off around 68. Mainly cloudy skies. Slight chance for scattered storms again tomorrow. High of 87. A mix of clouds and sun. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 85. Welcome to Tallulah Talk After Hours, your home for all things CBD. Tonight, we're talking about the benefits of CBD personal lubricants, CBD massage oils, romantic CBD scented candles, chocolates, and even CBD bath bombs. Did you know CBD lubricants can lead to increased sensitivity, resulting in longer and stronger experiences? What's left to talk about? Get yours today at Tallulah CBD on Market Street and now open in Betterman Crossings. Thanks for listening to to lose the talk after hours. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to Orange theoryfitness.com this is brian kilmeade and i'm excited to be on the air in the capital city be sure to tune into my show i'll be giving you all the latest news information and the truth 
you demand. The Brian Kilmeade Show is live from 9 till noon right here on Real Talk 93.3. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's Warchant.com. Now, back to Jeff on Real Talk Jacksonville State student section sold out. Maybe it's a better crowd than I'm giving them credit for. Uh, I feel pretty confident that Florida State's going to have a, a, a good day, a good day in this game. They really match up across the board, as you would suspect, um, at almost every position. If you want to go to warchant.com, you can see the breakdown for the pass defense versus the opponent passing game. You can go to FSU offensive line versus opponent defensive line. It really is – uh, a game where you can play a lot of guys. I, I would suspect you're going to see a lot of players, including some of the young guys. This is a chance. Uh, remember a, a number of years ago, what was it three years ago now? Where they maybe more time has a way of getting away from me these days. Where uh, they instituted the rule that you can, you know, guys that you might even redshirt can play four games. Yeah, I think that was like three or four years ago. Yeah. yeah. So these are the kinds of games where you get that valued experience, you know, where if you want to, you can, you can put some kids out there and really give them meaningful reps in a game and not really worry about burning a shirt or anything like that. And they got a lot of young guys that they're excited about who I think in the long run, they would certainly probably rather not lose a year on if possible, but they do want to see them play. And who knows, maybe they're guys that can help out in some areas and, and, and they will play. Uh, in some of the bigger games, in particular, a couple of safeties. Yeah, I just I think there's a lot of guys at most positions. You know, at linebacker is the first position I circle. I said I don't know how many players we have. If you came out of the the opening game healthy at the offensive line, so if Maury Smith is is okay in the long haul and Dylan Gibbons comes out of it all right, then I think you've got enough even to rotate an offensive line where there should be a lot of hungry players out there. We're not deep like we were by any means necessary back in 2013, 14, or even 2015. But you're starting to build the depth that when the next wave of players comes in, if I'm a fan in the stands, I'm still excited to see that next player because they can either help us in the long term or they might be able to help us soon enough. You're also touching on a point here uh, that describes how programs just get so much better, which is creating the real need to fight for playing time and creating the competition that elevates all players. So you know, Florida State's in the process, again, of not only evaluating, trying to improve the roster, but uh, forcing guys to really compete for that time. And these are situations where you get a chance to flash. You get a chance to put something on tape. You get a chance to go out there and maybe do something that surprises your coaches and then get another look later on down the line. So, yeah, I'm with you here. That's These games are good for that. They're good for reps for younger guys. They're good to uh, perhaps get in a little bit better rhythm offensively, certainly at the quarterback position. We'll see if we can get some of that. Uh, I frankly want to see both guys play. Um, I do wonder, you know, let's say, because McKenzie uh, ha has been out there this week, I know, and, and has participated. I don't want to get in trouble, but yeah. Well, I mean, I mean the observable time periods that we right. can report yeah. on. Yeah, and he's, he's part, part of those updates. Yeah. So um, they're, they're, you know, they're a full go in that, uh, in that room. So I'm kind of curious to see how they divide that up. Yeah, I'd like to get, you know, Chubba or Tate out there too, whoever won the third position the, the third quarterback oh, position on the I want to see chart. a lot of that I let's be honest here I think you want to see well I know what you want to see because you love the Rodemaker but he he's fourth on this depth chart so what I need to see is probably a lot of reps for Chubba uh oh yeah whoever it is like yes my mm -hmm. love for the Rodemaker aside he'll be the Rodemaker once he realizes his potential but it's because these guys are fragile above him I'm sorry Jordan like so the reason McKenzie stayed out there was not only because he threw a dime on his first pass after Jordan Travis' helmet came off. Jordan was also cramping in the moment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so it made the decision a lot easier for Mike to say, you know what, 10, you go stay out there. Well, two things happened. In, yeah, they benefited. Yeah. Right. And so let's say you're in a given week and McKenzie's leg just isn't what it, what it could be and what it needs to be in order to play a significant amount of snaps. And then Jordan comes up with something that might hold him out for three or four plays. 
listen, that's like the, the norm now, right? That's the norm with him. You've got to expect that to some degree. So if that's the case, and as a coach, you're preparing for the worst case scenario, you've got a plan for Chubba to get out there because chances are you're going to need him at some point this season. Hopefully not, but you probably will. Uh, let's yeah, knock on wood that we don't, but, uh, let's, let's, let's point to this here. I think this is interesting. Uh, just because I crack up when I read quotes like this, can you see if you can follow this? I'm moving away from Florida state for just a second. As we go to break, follow this quote and tell me if this makes any sense to you. Maybe it does, but rookie wide receiver, Jamar chase has had a really tough preseason as we get set for the NFL season to begin dropped a ton of balls, dropped the last four passes that were thrown to him. That's why I picked up T Higgins. So they're days away. This has caused concern. Chase is the fifth overall pick in the draft. Most expected that he and Joe Burrow, obviously, would, would hit it off swimmingly. He was asked about the drops, meaning Jamar Chase was, and he had this to say. Well, the, the ball is different because it's bigger. It doesn't have the white stripes on it either. So you can't see the ball coming from the tip point you actually have to look for the strings on the ball at the top. That's hard to see because the whole ball is brown and you have the six strings there that are white. But for the most part, I have to try to get used to it and find out if I could become comfortable catching. Uh, Don't answer any more questions, Jamar. That's a problem. That's not good. If you're working in the media relations team or Man, for that tell PR. Him to stop talking. Yep. Jeff Cameron Show PR firm is coming in here quick. Well, we're coming in hot. Also, maybe a LASIK surgeon. We gotta, we're going to have to sit down with Jamar. It's like the scene in My Cousin Vinny. He's oh, like, when's the yeah, last yeah. time you got your glasses changed? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's been about five years. Yeah. Think it's time for another a pair? Yeah. No? Well, let's check. He went on to say, uh, when asked to follow up on that, I'm sure, I don't want to blame it on me sitting on my butt the whole year, but that probably had something to do with it. There's a bigger ball adjustment here. I'm trying not to make excuses. I've got to be a pro and make a catch. Uh, again, my oh, man. Well, whatever I just said, throw it out the window. Uh, he just told you he's not trying. He didn't prepare. Well, yes. Yes. We. This is a Jeff Cameron Show PR firm nightmare, Tom Lang. I cannot believe yeah, this has happened. You're going to get called on the Winston Wolf line. This is going to be a tough one. I mean. We can double our rate as we fly to Cincinnati. You can name your price, but we've got to get. We got to have a long the name sit your down. price tool. Yeah. That's you. We're gonna to have to have a long sit down with the organization and Jamar. How much access the media gets to him? Also, certain training about how to answer questions when you're confused. I need a retainer guarantee of seven point five million dollars. <laughs> this is a tough ask. It's Jeff Cameron Show, ninety three three Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Hi, I'm Jeff, founder of Witch Witch Superior Sandwiches, and I'm here to tell you about our signature witch, the Wicked. Why call it the Wicked? Some say it's wicked tasty, some say it's wicked large. One thing's for sure, with oven roasted turkey, ham, pepperoni, roast beef, and bacon, as well as your choice of three cheeses, it definitely takes you from wicked hungry to wicked happy in just a few wicked good bites, only at Witch Witch Superior Sandwiches. On Wednesday, the Wicked is just five bucks. Five meats, three cheeses five bucks. Hi, Chris Kraft for the Kraft Brothers dealerships. At Kraft Nissan, we've been amazed at the number of Toyota and Honda people trading up to Nissan's new family of SUVs. The changes are stunning. And don't just take my word for it. Motor Trend tagged Rogue as the 2021 SUV of the year finalist, adding that Rogue can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Honda and Toyota. Well, guess what, Tallahassee? We can't keep the new Rogues on the showroom floor. Seriously, if you haven't seen one for yourself, come take a test drive and you'll see the new Rogue sells itself. In the 2022 Nissan Pathfinder, it's roomier, quicker, and better equipped. Plus, the second row seats easily slide and flip forward to allow access to the third row, even with a child seat installed. And finally, car and driver says savvy shoppers will be surprised by the new Armada's luxuriousness. So I encourage SUV lovers to come see the new Nissan family of SUVs. Everyone knows that Nissan SUVs have more standard equipment than the competition. The award-winning Rogue, Pathfinder, and Armada, only at Kraft Nissan. Mayhem Drive, Tallahassee. When some slithery, slimy something shows up uninvited in my home, I want it gone. Now. Not next Tuesday. Not tomorrow. Today. Pretty sure I'm not sleeping knowing that thing is crawling around in my house. That's why I call Paul's Termite and Pest Control. Here in Tallahassee, Paul's guarantees same-day service if I call before one. Ants, roaches, mice, 
wasps, fleas, whatever it is. Paul's responds with guaranteed same-day service. Pretty sure I've never heard that from any other pest company. Guess that's an advantage to being a locally owned and operated company like Paul's Termite and Pest Control. They're here and make things happen fast. We at Paul's know when you have some pest or rodent in your home, you want it out now. That's why in Tallahassee, we guarantee same-day service. You call us before one, we'll be there before five, guaranteed. That's our commitment to you. The health and protection of North Florida friends and neighbors is the reason we love our jobs. For the elimination of termites or any other pests. And a greener lawn, too. Call Paul's. We'll get them all. Learn more at callpauls.com. If you weren't the owner of Gordo's and all those wonderful restaurants, Eddie, what would you be doing? You know, I, I think I'd want to be a, I'd want to be, I don't know what I'd want to be, a boat captain or a cowboy. Do you know how to use a, a lasso? No. You'd have to do that if you were a cowboy. Yeah, but I've never even been on a horse. It's not my place to be on a horse. I agree. And the horse thanks you. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. The Jeff Cameron Show brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. of uh, of starting uh yeah my man maverick helmets good afternoon gents thoughts on maybe starting milton saturday for the first half and letting jordan take the second half get some rest for kz heading into wake yeah i'm fine with that i totally agree it, yeah you don't want him playing a full game i mean even you don't <laughs> need him to hopefully we don't and even if we did i don't know that he that you want that <laughs> you know I, I don't know that that's going to be moving forward Let's just say that he's able to practice all week long. Do you think that that's good policy to have McKenzie run 85 plays a week? I think that's asking a lot, given what we know about load management in camp. Yeah, I think you're going to have to be very careful. And I don't know enough about what the specific problems are with him to say what they should or shouldn't do. I'm being very careful about that. I have a tendency to overstate things. Uh, I'm a boisterous person and, and, and all of that, but I... I, I don't know, you know, I'd really like to know, is this something that gets better over time when you rep it? You know, how sometimes there's a soreness to a muscle, but the, there's no injury to the muscle. There's no damage. And the more you rep it, the more you work out the, the pain uh, and it gets easier. It's all, almost like lifting weights, right? Over time. I don't know if we're dealing with a situation like that or if it's something much different. You know, if you were to hypothesize that let's say it was uh you know it was a uh, nerve damage of some sort or something yeah you know, like that, a pitcher in his shoulder or something yeah, yeah yeah so i there are things that i just don't know about the nature of his situation that um doesn't really allow me to have much of an opinion on that i yes i think it that is common sense that you're right if you were trying to figure out ways to slowly build him to a place where he could handle the excess reps then you would you would limit it well you would, you, you would build slowly to use common sense it's one of two things it is an issue that is related to now ramping up the body and it's almost like a compensation issue that's new and could be treated or it's been several years and this is just the way he's going to live. Like, I think those are your two options as to what it could be. Either way, either way, we need McKenzie in more games, not fewer games. Yo, no, so whatever yeah. can get him in the most amount of games possible, which I would think uh, you don't need to be on a pitch count like it's 50 plays like you're Steven Strasburg in his rookie year or something, right. but it's probably best policy to say, hey, you don't need to play start to finish in every one of these things. My wish for him, my my hope for him is that it's something that allows him to build slowly towards uh, more reps, more time under center, more days at practice, more, uh, you know, moments with the first team. Because if he's going to blossom to become the guy that we thought he would be when we got him to transfer in here, uh, then, then he, you know, he'll have to be your primary guy at some point. You're gonna, you're gonna want to have a drop back passing game if we can block it up. If we can block it up, big if, big if indeed. Hour number two, fourth coming. Stay with. It's happening in the capital city. You'll hear it first on Real Talk ninety three point three WVFT, Gretna, Tallahassee. 
Breaking news this hour from townhall.com. I'm John Scott. President Biden today will announce an updated plan to fight the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. White House correspondent Greg Cluxton reports. In response to surging COVID cases and hospitalizations, the president will lay out an updated effort to increase vaccinations and stop the spread of the virus. There are six steps the president's announcing. There will be new components. White House spokesman Jen Psaki says progress has been made, but the pandemic is not over. We are still at war with the virus and with the Delta variant. She says the president's six steps will build on previous actions taken by the administration. Greg Clugston, Washington. Also at townhall.com, dozens of foreigners, including Americans, have left Kabul on an international commercial flight, marking the first large-scale evacuation since U.S. and NATO forces left Afghanistan late last month. Their departure represents a breakthrough in the bumpy coordination between the U.S. and Afghanistan's new Taliban leaders. The Taliban have said they will let foreigners and Afghans with valid travel documents leave but a days-long standoff over charter planes at another airport had cast some doubt on Taliban's assurances. The Qatar Airways flight is heading to Doha. A senior U.S. official said that Americans, green card holders and other nationalities, including Germans, Hungarians and Canadians, are on the flight. I'm Zaria Shakli. The number of Americans seeking unemployment benefit fell sharply last week to 310,000, a pandemic low and a sign that the surge in COVID-19 cases caused by the Delta variant has yet to lead to widespread layoffs. The report from the Labor Department showed that jobless claims dropped from a revised total of 345,000 the week before. Stocks are lower, the Dow off 123 points, and the NASDAQ down nine. More at townhall.com. Hey, I'm Andy. If you don't know me, it's probably because I'm not famous. But I did start a men's grooming company called Harry's. The idea for Harry's came out of a frustrating experience I had buying razor blades. Most brands were overpriced, overdesigned, and out of touch. At Harry's, our approach is simple. Here's our secret. We make sharp, durable blades and sell them at honest prices for as low as $2 each. We care about quality so much that we do some crazy things, like buy a world-class German blade factory. Obsessing over every detail means we're confident in offering a 100% quality guarantee. Millions of guys have already made the switch to Harry's. So thank you if you're one of them. And if you're not, we hope you give us a try with this special offer. Get a Harry starter set with a five-blade razor, weighted handle, shave gel, and a travel cover. All for just three bucks, plus free shipping. Just go to harrys.com and enter 3388 at checkout. That's harrys.com, code 3388. Enjoy! Hey Tallahassee, this is Sarah with Seminole Autoglass. There's so much more to Autoglass than most people know. With the technology these days, lane departure, keep assist, forward collision, that camera is attached to your windshield. When the windshield gets replaced, it needs to be reset, and that's called recalibration. And Seminole Autoglass was the first to offer it here. We offer drop-off service or mobile service if available. Don't forget about customer service. Oh yeah, we have the best customer service in town. And a $50 gift card with your windshield through insurance. We're more than just a glass company. We are your local Autoglass experts. Better call Seminole. <laughs> Warchant.com is the ultimate inside source for FSU football and recruiting. Get in on the action for free for an entire month. Warchant.com is offering a risk-free 30-day trial subscription just by entering the promo code Warchant30. That's Warchant30. Get in on the world's most active FSU message boards. Receive breaking news, stories from our award-winning staff, plus get exclusive interviews and videos. Just enter the promo code Warchant30. Warchant.com, your ultimate seminal sports source. Broadcasting live from Florida's capital city, this is the Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness on Real Talk 93.3. Now, stop what you're doing and listen closely. It's time for the Jeff Cameron Show in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.
uh, with your YouTube feed direction. On Twitter, it's at Jay Cameron Show. It's good to be here. The games, I laid them before you at the uh, beginning of the show, but I'll touch on them again here in case you uh, like the action. Maybe, mm. maybe you're a sporting guy or gal, as I like to say. Perhaps that is you. Who doesn't like the action? Action's everywhere. We got it everywhere. You can find it wherever you turn your head. We got games throughout the weekend. Really good games. The slate's good this week. It's an underrated slate. Not quite a park your ass Saturday. We're not at park your ass Saturday status yet. But, and maybe it's just because all games are interesting to me, Tom, or they could be. But I would tell you that I really am legitimately, just as a college football fan, it, no, I mean, yeah, of course, you guys know me. I'm going to be involved in these games and some of these games. But I, I remove that for a second. I'm just talking to you, the college and pro football fan. You know, the Cyhawk, all jokes aside, is a great game. This Iowa-Iowa State game is a battle between two top ten teams. So, you know, one of those teams, I know the, you know, Iowa State is is not sexy, but they play a rugged brand of defense. They figure to win 10 games this year. They could be interesting in the national story. Matt Campbell trying to really kind of kick down the door here to where, yes, he's well thought of, but this could be the season that parlays this into the best job that he's ever going to get. It's not like Iowa's going to win a Miss Universe pageant either, man. But I love yeah. watching that team play. They've got great fans. They play great defense. We gave you the stat yesterday. 23 consecutive games of giving up 24 points or fewer leads the nation by a mile. So what's the race to? 24? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's the race. To, and, well, so, and, and by the way, the number is 46. So, yeah, there, there we go. Um, so that's a fun game. I really – uh, I'm excited to watch the Texas Arkansas game. Now I know n not everybody is pumped up about that, but if you're of a certain age, you remember the old Southwest Conference line. I do, and you weren't around. Um, nope, means nothing. <laughs> well, so this is a rivalry game. This is a a big time rivalry game, and both programs have been bad, so they're desperate to get back. Obviously, when you think about it, second year for Pittman there at Arkansas, he's an affable fellow, to say the least. Uh, jolly is what the way I would describe him. Cares deeply. Cares deeply. You get teary-eyed saying, woo, pig, suey. So, woo, pig, suey. There it is. And then you think about Sarkeesian's first year at Texas. Off to a good start. Had a tough opponent last week against a stout defense. Bijan Robinson ran the ball well. They got enough of quarterback there. That was fun to watch. So now these two teams clash at a 7 o'clock kickoff at night. Hey, man, I'm in on that. I'm going to watch that game. Pitt, Tennessee. Tennessee, Josh Heupel era underway. I think Pitt goes in there and wins that game in a hostile environment. Good win for the ACC. I want to see that game. Uh, other games I want to watch or that I'm interested in watching that, I mean, legitimately I find to be fun. If you think of the SEC East, all right, there's it's Georgia and nobody else. Oh, yeah. It's the, Georgia and nobody else, like right? Kentucky in the B tier, maybe B minus tier, and then everybody else in, what, the C tier? Well, Florida's above the – I mean, Florida's better than the, the – you know, I mean, listen, that's the team that everybody would rightfully project. Are sure? Finish. They lost so much. But hold on. This is what I'm getting to. All right. Florida would be in – is the overwhelming favorite to finish second in the East, okay? I think either Kentucky or Missouri could be that team. There you go. So – they play each other this weekend, Kentucky and Missouri. Mm. This is a big game for those two programs because when you are third fiddle in a division, a tough conference, you know, becoming that team that moves into second and, and develops some sort of, you know, momentum to unseat a power like Florida or potentially doing that, that's a big damn – that's about the best you can hope for at Missouri or Kentucky. Oh, yeah. Missouri won the East back-to-back -back years, yes, didn't it? they did. Yeah. when they first joined the conference. But <laughs> those right. days are long gone, and they haven't been close. And so I do think this is interesting. That's a big game. I look at that as a big game and one I want to see. Now, Ohio State and Oregon, we were robbed of this matchup a year ago because of COVID. Now we get to see it. I think Ohio State wins, but it's not as if Ohio State's defense didn't look very vulnerable. Yeah, Hell, Ohio State's defense wasn't great last year. Their linebackers are shaky. This will be a really fun game to see how Stroud develops from week one to week two because his first game was on the road, and that place was raucous. Yeah, so no. that experience is going to be great for him. Obviously, I know that they're playing in, uh, in Columbus. Yes. 
But still, the point being that if you've gone through the ringer like that in your first start, he should be much calmer in the pocket. He should be much more able to make the throws downfield because it wasn't for a lack of being open down the field for Ohio no, State he receivers. He, just he was just him. missing a ton of them. Yeah, he missed them. Now, that's where they're so explosive at wide receiver. They've got such a group there. I, mean, I can't really, believe Olave came back. They're really, really good. And that, one, thing, one thing to note here about that is I think that's where the matchup falls. Now, I don't know how healthy Kayvon Thibodeau is for Oregon, and it's important that he be healthy because if he is, obviously pressuring C.J. Stroud, getting him off his spot, getting him uncomfortable, making him think. I mean, you're talking about a guy that many people think is the first pick in the NFL draft, and he was in a boot this week. If he misses significant time in this game, people also forget he's not just great rushing the passer. He's very good, really good against the run. He's a monster. He's a monster. If he's less than 100%, and it looks like he will be, if he's not effective, I mean, there's certainly a reason why Oregon's a double-digit dog. They've recruited well. They do have good team speed. I think they'll be better equipped in that secondary to run with Ohio State's receivers, but they've got to get pressure on C.J. Stroud, and I don't know that we're going to see that. And then I think the other problem you have for Oregon, if you're trying to pull the upset as a double-digit dog on the road against a team like that, is that your quarterback, Anthony Brown, is is ass. So you kind of have a bit of an issue there at quarterback as well. He's just wildly inconsistent, dual-threat guy, so maybe he hurts him with his legs. It's not a good matchup there yeah, well, at quarterback. I can quarterback. see why you play the total and not the 14 in the hook. Mm -hmm. That's a little tough. You needed to get on that. I think early, if you got it on Sunday or Monday, you could get it under 14. Oh, you could have got it at 13 and a half. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you would have wanted to do that if you were going to lay the number. Uh, you would have wanted to do that. But that, but that's, again, removing the gambling angle, I'm just excited to see that game because Oregon has recruited exceptionally well. They do have speed. Teams have scored on Ohio State. If they keep that kid upright and he can hit on a few plays, we got an interesting game into the fourth quarter. It's possible. By the way, 9 a.m. body clock for Oregon for that game Ooh, if you're into those sorts of go. things. Uh, I'm legitimately interested in the NC State-Mississippi State game. Yeah, me too. Legitimately interested in that game, partly because, again, Florida State, here we go, guys. That's a team we have to play. And if you're thinking seven wins, God forbid, eight wins, if that's what you're looking at and projecting for Florida State, well, then you have to be able to write in a win against NC State and Tallahassee. And that is a tall task given their offensive and defensive lines. Physical team, big receivers, can run the ball with Bam Knight. They're a good team. I think they go in on the road at night into Starkville and win that game. But if they're frauds, they don't, and then we can feel better about it. So I'm going to watch that game closely. Yeah, that's a great one to watch. And what's interesting is if you play that game, I don't know, a handful of seasons ago, six seasons ago, the reputation would be that NC State's going to be a drop-back passing team, not necessarily the most smash-mouth team in the world, and then Mississippi State would be running right at you, three yards in a cloud of dust. But that's not this game. Mike Leach is going to spread it out, run the raid, and then you got NC State as the physical team. It's kind of backwards as it would have been. And I, I've had to reassess just in my own mind as I hear it on the radio this week as people are breaking it down that, oh, yeah, that's right. Got to remember that Leach is out there. This is different. You, you know, NC State wants to shorten the game, not Mississippi State. NC State wants to shorten the game, which is kind of backwards to get used to. Yeah, um, it doesn't feel like he's connected there at Mississippi State. That first game. Obviously, they threw it all over the lot, had huge success against LSU. Remember, then he made fun of the SEC, said this wasn't so hard and all this. Well, my man, COVID year, nobody played defense. Let's slow our roll. You haven't done a damn thing since. Should have lost last week. Isn't very good. I be interesting. See what happens with NC State going in there to win that game. And uh, not a game that I care all that much to watch, uh, per se, but it does involve two Florida teams. And I'm curious how long Florida plays Emory Jones before they go to Richardson. Because that's who's going to win that job down the line. And I know where they're at now. I hope they never wake up and decide to just continue to play it. Right, because then That'd it implodes be on Mullen. Yeah. Yeah, but they're going to kill USF, by the way. That's a, whoo, Jeff Scott. Does 29 scare you? Uh, a little bit because it's a look ahead. Yeah. Florida yeah. plays Alabama. I would think that they get up big early and then just sit on it and really don't show anything and try to get out of there and shorten the game. So it's not a play for me. Uh, otherwise, it would be. If this was in a vacuum, I'd pick Florida to win by 60. Uh, USF is an embarrassment to football right now. Uh, getting shut out by a good NC State is one thing, but to not be competitive in any way, shape, or form, that has to 
sit, you know, sound the sirens a little bit. That's a bad, bad program. He's got a lot of work to do. And I think he's a good coach, but he's got a lot of work to do. That's it. When you talk about rebuilds, man, there are a few of them around the country that you look at and you think, hmm, that'll take two years. That might take three years if he's got it going here. I mean, hell, it took Chip three years to, you know, three full seasons to, to go into this year feeling like there was any momentum at all. And it had to do with being able to recruit the offensive and defensive lines. Uh, Chip Kelly, that is, at UCLA. So when you talk about rebuilds, right, you're always looking at coaches come in. It, man, it, it can take that long. If, you, if the cupboard is that empty and you gotta you got to find a way to win the line of scrimmage, it could take three or four years. Did you pay any attention to Notre Dame and Toledo, just given the context clues of what we saw on Monday night, and maybe you could you know, get the jump on Vegas? Yeah, I thought the number was the right number. I, I immediately thought it was the right number. I went, that sounds about right. I don't want any part of it. Well, what if our defensive line is actually well above average in college football? You might be able to get Notre Dame as a steal there because then Tyree and Kyron Williams could go nuts. I, it's possible, but I would tell, tell you this. Notre Dame suffered a lot of injuries in that game against us. And yeah, they uh, did. that is, I don't know. I it, it's It feels a bit like a letdown. Um, short week, the whole thing. Short week, letdown. I, I, I don't want any part of it. I'll just tell you that. I really don't. But I, I guess circling back real quick to what I was talking about with, uh, with Florida, um, Anthony Richardson is going to get to play in this game, I would think. And I, that's, I want to watch him. I want to watch him. I want to see how much, if, if it, he's a redshirt freshman, is he appreciably better than is Emory Jones? Because I think the answer is probably yes. Well, if that's the case, then that's a problem. Because well, then, that, well, listen, then you got to change everything about the November outlook for the Florida game and, and the relative strength of that program because then Mullen can circle the wagons and survive yet again. Well, and listen, the problem with Mullen isn't the record or the production. I mean, he's winning games. They score points. He's really good at coaching up the quarterbacks. I just get McElwain vibes. Like, they're just waiting for a reason. Well, they don't like him. Yes. He's a doofus. Right. Uh, yes, and he says dumb things. But at the same time, I mean, he does win games. And he and I don't think it's by smoke and mirrors the way we did with McElwain. Yeah. Yeah, this isn't that. He he can really coach. He's a, Captain Shark. Yeah, he's a goofy guy, but he can really coach. So I guess what I'm getting at is that, A, we love college football. We love that it's back, and there are a lot of games to watch. We're also on that, okay, we all know, no matter how objective we try to be, no matter if we're trying to figure out things for just uh, uh, you know making sense of the landscape or if we're gambling or whatever it might be, we all know that we overreact to extreme results in week one. Things that, you know, I, there is going to be an answer somewhere along the way in college football in week two that makes you realize the week one thing was flukish. We'll probably see a couple of those where we go, hmm. I mean, there's a candidate in Ann Arbor. If Washington keeps that game close and then you look and they had a lot of guys miss because of COVID, you all of a sudden you're like, okay, well, maybe they're not so damn sorry because you lose at home to Montana. And people get nervous. The high country, yeah. <laughs> they lost at home to Montana. And, uh, okay, that'll hurt your feelings a little bit. That's a huge upset. Immediately, if you couple that with the fact that Washington, the last game last year, lost to Stanford. And Stanford is headed in Ooh, the wrong direction. Stanford's got problems. So they have a new head coach at Washington, right? And right off the bat, he loses at the end of the year to Stanford. You go, oh, COVID year, I don't know how in it were they, whatever. And then they lose that game to Montana. We're like, well, well hey, buddy, what you doing? What you doing out here? Are you in over your head? Is Harbaugh going to blow you out? He doesn't blow anybody out. Yeah. You feel like you may be in over your head. I'm getting a little worried about you. So, see, that's what I'm saying. We're, <laughs> we got, we've got a lot of look around here. Yeah. A lot of look around And here. then once we catch our breath, we got a full slate on Sunday, buddy. <sighs> Scott Hansen's back on NFL Red Zone. All righty. Seven hours. And then that night, you'll join me and my good buddy, Ira Chaffel, for the Sunday Smash. That's right. Seven o'clock. Questions about pro ball, college ball, specific to FSU or not. That's what I hear. Playing. We're going to talk about Ira's affinity for Red Stripe and, and what's going on in the Sunday slate, right? We're going to we're gonna be able to give you updates. What if you were, what if you were stuck somehow uh, in a car or at the office and you were doing something on a Sunday evening? You could just mm -hmm. pull up the Sunday smash with me and Ira. 
I'll give you updates of what's happening in the late games of the NFL. We'll look ahead at some of the other action that night. Of course, we have NFL football that night. Talk about that game. Yeah. Be able to talk about the, the college slate that just ended on Saturday and what to look ahead to for the next week. There's a lot we'll get to every Sunday. I think you guys should pick the Sunday night game every week, and there should be like a hat or something that you got to wear or something you got to put it in your background as like a pariah if you get it wrong. Oh, if you get it wrong? Yeah. So if I take Cleveland and they lose, I have to put a Cleveland hat behind me? Something like that. Well, that gets expensive after a while, but yeah. Yeah, something. at some point, if we do this show long enough, I'll collect every team in the NFL's hat for some ungodly Or you reason. have to have, like, you like Red Stripe, but that means you got to have Red Stripe the next week. And then I don't like it nearly as much as Ira does. Right. Yeah. Well, the best I'm, part of the show is here, you know, when the <laughs> second one opened, I was like, whoa. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And you said, what was that? <laughs> I called attention to <laughs> yeah, it. You sure did. Yeah. It's my second one. And then the people who were watching headlines said, wait a minute, didn't he just call Corey out for popping beers really fast? Yeah. 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 No, that's good. It's, um, <laughs> I uh, saw a story today really quickly on, uh, on Yahoo Sports, and the article was, could Auburn get two LSU coaches fired? And it was kind of funny because I, I jumped on it and went, oh, what is this? And then I realized it was an old story, and I thought, okay, because I, I was I was screwed up for a second. I thought, what is this? What is this? Yeah, that's what I was asking. Yahoo Sports is still a thing? Yeah, no, I it was funny. It was a flashback story, and uh, but I'm so in tune to the fact that I think Ed O's in trouble that I was like, whoa, what is this? What is that? <laughs> Just a side story. Just a side story. Chef Cambridge at 93.3 Real Talk Radio. Hey, guys, it's Greg Tish. It's summertime. It's grilling time. But with a grill that just won't light, you're just going to end up with the summertime blues. Yeah, blues and barbecue go hand in hand. But if you get a custom outdoor kitchen built from Hearth and Patio, you'll feel like a rock star every time those flames kick on. They also sell a full line of incredible high-end grills like Fire Magic, Blaze and Broil Master, all designed to deliver the ultimate in beauty, performance, and durability. Everything you need to elevate your grilling experience can be found at Hearth and Patio. In fact, anything related to fire can be found at Hearth and Patio. Fire pits, gas lighting, indoor and outdoor fireplaces, wood stoves, and even custom built pizza ovens. Go see for yourself. Check out their services and products online at hearthpatiotallahassee.com. That's hearthpatiotallahassee.com or give them a call 850-727-4282. That's 850-727-4282. At Hearth and Patio, they keep the home fires burning. What's important when shopping at a gun store? Let's start with a friendly and knowledgeable staff. Then add top-notch service, great selection and pricing, and a personal shopping experience only found at a locally owned and operated business. At Red Hills Arms, they're right on target. While other gun stores come and go, Red Hills Arms remains Tallahassee's go-to local gun store for all your firearms needs. Stop by today and get welcomed in my family. This is Patty Wilson. Oh, I'm sorry. We're ready. <laughs> He's recording. I, why are you always saying your last name? I it's Patty and Scott. Everybody knows know that. Patty and Scott. I don't know. This is Patty Wilson. Not this is. I am Patty Wilson. <laughs> What is the idea behind said promo? It's for Patty's Playhouse. We're on Patty's Playhouse Saturdays at 11. Tune in. That's stupid. Just tune in. Saturdays at 11. Patty Wilson, Patty's Playhouse. House talk with a happy ending. Each and every time. <laughs> Summertime is color time. This summer, why not spend your time off with a home improvement project? You can use this time to try one of the most popular DIY projects. Painting. And you can find your favorite color with one of America's most popular paints, Benjamin Moore. Shop for all the best paint colors and paint supplies at Epps Decorating Center with two convenient locations in town. Find out more online at EppsDecorating.com. If you're worried about your hard-earned dollars becoming worthless or your 401k or IRA losing value, now is the time to move into gold. No, not gold or silver stocks, but real gold and silver you can actually hold in your hands. How do you get real gold and silver? By calling Oxford Gold today at 833-600-GOLD. The Oxford Gold Group will teach you everything you need to know about owning real gold and silver. It's a lot easier than you think. Call the Oxford Gold Group right now at 833-600-GOLD to get your free gold and silver investment guide. Put your savings and retirement accounts into something real. 
by gold and silver. Get your free Oxford Gold Group investment guide today and learn how easy it is to have real gold and silver delivered to your home or how you can have real gold and silver in your retirement account. Don't sit back and watch your savings and retirement account suffer. Now is the time to make your money work as hard for you as you did for your money. So do this. Call the Oxford Gold Group right now, today, 833-600-GOLD. That's 833-600-G-O-L-D. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience a more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's Warchant.com. Now, back to Jeff on Real Talk visited disney world that's that's uh, you smile thinking about it even though it's a terrible song they're but, basically we'll kill you we'll take your money and you're oh it's a great song yeah it's okay they're pirates it's what they do it's what they do <laughs> just so happy sounding it's a uh very <laughs> short segment here i i get an opportunity in a moment um we've got a new partner uh that we've teamed up with uh, isf inc um, and, uh, this is cool. I've got, I've gotten to know them over the last couple of weeks and I'm excited to partner with them and I'll we have a fixed position feature with them that I'll tell you about, but I'll also tell you more importantly what they do. Uh, this short segment is, uh, <laughs> don't blame the messenger. Don't get mad at me, Tom. You think I'm morbid. I just want to know if this is an ominous sign for Cincinnati. Well, we just got done with a happy sounding song where the ride takes you through burning villages and cities. So you know, yeah. we're good. But you know, the thing about the burning villages and cities in the pirates chase, you know, they've changed that by the yeah. way. Yeah. They changed it. They didn't make it so uh, overt. Um, they didn't make it so factual. They're chasing women around and they're yeah. like running they're for their lives. And all that. You know, yeah, it's yeah. like, geez. Yeah. No, that uh, tough days back then, tough days back then with the pirates. But uh, what I, what I will tell you, Tom, is that, uh, Every time I've ever been on that ride, I always think, well, I'd like to stay here for the night. This looks fun. This looks like a place I'd like to just be. Like right up there on the, with them and the, the, the carousing and all the good. I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to you know, chase the fake plastic mechanical women. Right. But I'm right. saying like the hanging out at the bar. You don't want to live in Beverly Hills. You know? No, I'm, I'm like that whole little area there is just looking like a peaceful well, place. It, well, you notice it's the same kind of lighting as when you go into Mexico in Epcot. Yeah, that is true. There's something about that they lighting. Oh, they man. You. you walk in there, that air conditioning hits oh, you. You're like, yeah. Man, it's home. 105 out here. Yeah, I'm with you. So here, this is, again, not my fault, guys. I didn't make this happen. And don't go look at the picture. It'll make you sad. It'll make you sad. But uh, a giraffe named after Cincinnati Bengals quarterback Joe Burrow okay. has died. Great. Um, it was only 20 months old, too. Very tragic. Uh, a young giraffe, giraffe, not giraffe, a young giraffe named after Cincinnati Bengals quarterback and former LSU star Joe Burrow died Wednesday, a day after falling ill. Officials at the Baton Rouge Zoo said in release Thursday that the 20-month-old giraffe named Burrow as you might imagine, it's spelled B-U-R-R-E-A-U-X, had died after developing a sudden onset of symptoms, including a severe cough and overall agitation. That's not very clinical, is it? Uh, you're suffering from uh, overall agitation, huh? The zoo's veterinary staff took, became an a-hole. took immediate measures to help, including swiftly administering medications to stabilize the young giraffe, as well, he underwent constant staff evaluation to optimize his, optimize his chances of recovery. The zoo's team reached out to numerous zoological veterinarians throughout the nation, none of which had experienced a giraffe with comparable symptoms of severe coughing, and it's dead. It had been named uh, and chosen in a fundraiser run by the zoo and came after Burrow spelled it that way on the back of his jersey on senior night when they beat that ass. The zoo said... The greatest promotional video in college football history. It was incredible. The zoo said an LSU veterinary team has performed an 
necropsy to uh, determine the uh, possible cause of death. Anyhow, at uh, giraffe is dead. And so what I'm asking you, and it is sad, I love animals, it's a shame, but uh, what are you going to do? I am wondering if you think it's a bad omen for the season <laughs> for Cincinnati and Joe for Cincinnati. <laughs> I was wondering, what's <laughs> well, the payoff here? The payoff here is not only did that happen, are we are we cringing a little bit based on well, the injury that my man has had to overcome okay. and now this? I'm not even going to touch the injury because you've hit on two things that could be harbingers of real bad times. Yes, and I'm not Jamar Chase yeah. that there aren't stripes in the football, and this is concerning at the NFL level. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on with and Cincinnati then, today out of nowhere that leads me to believe that I'm, uh, you know, I'm a little concerned. Yes, and then burrow the giraffe, reminding us that uh, so you got me saying giraffe now. Mm -hmm. The uh, <laughs> reminding us fun. that that toy is uh, ride a giraffe. <laughs> it's like <laughs> in a water park. <laughs> <laughs> reminding me that Toys R Us shut down years ago with Geoffrey. Oh man! Yeah, remember that place? I loved it. There was nothing better than getting the piece of paper that said you're getting a video game. So you got to go to that like pen in the back. That dude had the key to the life. What happened? What happened in this world that? Besides online shopping, there it is. That ruined the visit to the Toys R Us for kids everywhere. God dog it! Don't order your children's toys off of Amazon. You take your ass up there to Toys R Us, like we all did. It was always Toys R Us too. It was never KB Toys. Oh, KB no. would oh, always no. rip you off. Yeah. Always. Yeah, we're not doing KB. Toys R Us. I bought the uh, Toys R Us I bought, subliminal. Uh, there you it's go. American. I bought uh, Bryce's crib at Toys R Us. You did? Yeah. They have. Remember that whole section was all cribs. Oh, they the, did. That was yeah. the section. I'm like, I don't need this place. Yeah. No. Take me to the Hot Wheels. They had a great section and selection of cribs. And then, like every father that's ever bought a crib, I cursed its existence trying to put it together. One o'clock in the morning with a beer in my hand, go. This is ridiculous. There is no C. Why are you telling me C? C is not anywhere in this package. Just call it a rib. It's the Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Your local news now. A Leon County Circuit judge on Wednesday again blocked Governor Ron DeSantis' executive order that seeks to bar school mask mandates, giving at least a temporary victory to parents challenging the order. Judge John Cooper issued a written ruling last week that said DeSantis had overstepped his constitutional authority in the executive order. The DeSantis administration quickly appealed to the First District Court of Appeals, triggering an automatic stay of the ruling while the case moves forward. But Cooper on Wednesday vacated the automatic stay, meaning that his ruling last week is in effect and school districts can and continue with student mask requirements. The Tallahassee Police Department says it responded to a shooting in the 200 block of Hayden Road early Wednesday morning. A man was taken to a hospital in the area for treatment of his minor injuries. As of 10 a.m. Wednesday, there were no suspects in the case and no arrests have been made. It is believed that this is an isolated incident. This is Rachel Linnae with your Real Talk 93.3 local news update. Brought to you by Macklemore Systems, Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Frobley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Sunshine mixed with clouds at times this afternoon with a chance for scattered thunderstorms. Daytime highs approaching 87. West winds 8 to 15 miles per hour. Chance for scattered storms tonight. Lows level off around 68. Mainly cloudy skies. Slight chance for scattered storms again tomorrow. High of 87. A mix of clouds and sun. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 87. Hey, no fans. Our partner, ISF Inc., is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state government, including public health and emergency response agencies, our friends at ISF recognize September as National Preparedness Month and want to help you be safe this hurricane season. Visit ISF.com to learn more and download your emergency preparedness plan today. ISF, solving the future. Greg Tish, Real Talk 93.3. Hey, everybody, this is Greg Tish. Thank you so much for listening to Real Talk 93.3. Don't forget, you can check out me and Maddie Rowe every Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. on The Greg Tish Show. Wake up with a smile at The Greg Tish Show. How's that sound, Maddie Rowe? Is that a good promo for you? That's good enough for me. Is that good? Are we it's at 30 everybody. seconds yet? Right about now. The Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. 
We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's Warchant.com. Now, back to Jeff on Real Talk 93.3. little bit i'll get to know more as we go along what their expertise is they help state government solve um for their immediate plans right the, the, the you want to do things you got big visions and goals and you want to learn how to execute those and you want to move your your agency forward you want to do those things you have unique challenges they help you do that they solve for the future and they use strategy and process and technology and all that and i thought it was a good way if we wanted to tie it in and make it applicable for the show, you know, what, how would we do that? And, and, and how would we talk about that? And I think the way to do it, it makes a lot of sense as we talk about having a big vision or a goal or, you know, wanting to achieve things. Well, we make it applicable to Florida state football and what Florida state's doing. Oh, it's all about the future in order to solve for the future. And so, uh, I thought, I thought it was a good marriage. I thought it worked. Not everything always works when we meet with people. Sometimes I realize that it's not something we can help you with, but when we talk about strategizing and we talk about, you know, a process and we talk about moving things forward and achieving those goals, it, it, it makes a lot of sense to join with ISF. So we appreciate them. And by the way, that's a, it, it, it is a national firm right here in Tallahassee and they 40 years, they've served state government business clients across the country, but they're right here housed in Tallahassee. Uh, I think the way to look at this, Tom, for Florida State without question, is what they did, there was a major problem, and you've got goals, and you've got to achieve those goals. How are we going to solve this problem? Well, that problem has been pretty persistent in two locales, but let's start where they helped solve it for this year, at least for now, and I think it's something that has staying power, and that would be bringing in Jermaine Johnson from Georgia, who was the best player on the field on Sunday night. Well, especially besides Hamilton for Notre Dame, but I really for a long stretch of the game, Tom. Sorry, for a long stretch of the game, especially that I don't know two and a half quarters. Jermaine Johns was the best player on the field. Yeah, I well, yes, the first two and a half quarters, especially. I thought Keir Thomas had a good second half, but that again, this speaks to a skill that Mike Norvell may have that Jimbo had. I understand this is the transfer market mm -hmm. and not the high school mm -hmm. market, but if you're able to project what a player can be. That is going to help become it helps you be much more efficient as a program because it speeds up the process of development. I don't have to develop this guy as much because he's going to grow into his body and be X. You say about a 17 year old like Jimbo Fisher did about Devonta Freeman right. when he went and see his practice. Well, Mike has hit on so far. You, you need to see a handful of games to really know. But you take a look at the impact of transfers across the board on this team defensively and offensively. Mm -hmm. You're starting left guard. You're starting right guard from you know two years ago. We went got him in the transfer market. Mackenzie Milton, which that was kind of a no brainer. Jermaine Johnson, Keir Thomas, Jamie Robinson, Jerrion Jones. We could go on and on. They've got a good eye for this stuff. It's not just I put my name in the transfer portal and Florida State was the first you know program to reach out to me. It's almost like they have a sixth sense of who would fit into what they want to do. Well, they get they get on it early, uh, and and again. Uh, the reason it's applicable when you're solving the future and you're trying to fix problems and you're trying to go through this and, and you're, you're relying on something, in this case, your coach is to identify these players. You've got to get out to them quickly, but also you've got to talk to these kids to make sure they're the kinds of guys that are going to fit with what you're trying to do. When you ask for buy-in you know, with the kids that are already on the roster and the ones who have remained behind to work towards that end, you can't then just bring in any old 
person who's a you know right. a mercenary per se who's going to upset the apple cart. Now it's okay that those guys have motivations beyond the team. Obviously, they want playing time. Everybody can agree upon a bottom line here. This is what we have to do, and we offer this to you. It's a win-win. But at the same time, you've got to know, are they a fit with your culture? And that's where I think they do identify guys very well. It's not just the talent. It's that those guys were guys that really met what they were trying to do from a leadership standpoint. Yeah, and of course, Dan Lanning can help out in the case of Jermaine Johnson. You get you get whispers within the program, and it co yeah. the coaching community is very Oh, close knit. Uh, collaborative. <laughs> well, they're collaborative. Yeah. You know, because they really they really do. Most of the coaches, not every single one, <clears throat> Urban Meyer, but most of the coaches want to do best and right by the kids. And so if if I'm a coach at Georgia, like Dan Lanning, and I'm like most other coaches, and I know that Jermaine wants to go somewhere else, I'm gonna call my friend. I'm gonna call Mike Norvell and say, Hey, listen, I think this is gonna go this way. If it does, you give him a call. Because you're going to love everything about what this kid can bring to your program. He's going to get the snaps he needs, the exposure he needs. We're just too loaded at edge rusher, which, right. which you saw right. this yeah. past weekend. And that's what happened in that case. However, I don't know that you could say that across the board. For every single you know uh, transfer that we brought in, they find a way to circle the right guys. And if they could do that with high school players, and we've already seen it. Well, Malik McClain. Yeah, Look yeah, at Malik, yeah, McClain. Malik McClain. Hey, I'm going to talk about him in a second. Um, let me put a ribbon on this real quick again. Really happy to have ISF on board with the Jeff Cameron Show, solving the future. Uh, again, they understand the way the state government works, uh, whether it's business processes, workflows, strategies. Uh, this is this is a group that has worked with agencies like yours, if you're out there listening to this, and they can help you achieve your goals uh, through technology, through process, through strategy. Uh, and and they, they will connect. I promise you that they will connect. Uh, ISF, solving the future. I would go to ISF.com if you want to learn more. Uh, really quickly on Malik McLean. I uh, <laughs> I was even more impressed when I went back and looked at that game. I know you were too. Mm -hmm. I was impressed when it happened live. We've been impressed by him all camp long. A lot of what we saw, you know, I kept thinking, this is, this is a kid who doesn't strike me as a guy that's going to take a long time to develop a significant role within the offense. This strikes me as a guy who's willing to put in the work, has the requisite skill set, a body type that, yes, he can block out on the edge and a willingness to do so. He's got toughness to him, and he'll go up and make a catch in traffic. Now, we're going to see a lot of those things have to develop as we get better in the passing game. But when I went back and watched that video, man, he's a big part of why the Jason Corbin run happened uh, with a block on Kyle Hamilton. Um he is a big reason why uh, some of the passes out on the edges ended up being positive instead of negative plays because his yeah. willingness to engage in those blocks. He's a really good football player. We got a guy. We got a guy, everybody, at wide receiver. It's been a, been a minute. He was somebody that you could circle early on in spring camp because you saw that in the short area when it came to physical play and fighting through contact, he wasn't afraid. It's not typical for a true freshman, somebody who should be going to prom, to be able to do that at the collegiate level. Was he always good at it? No. But was he unafraid? Yes. And that's the most important thing. The other thing on the Kyle Hamilton block that's worth noting, Kyle Hamilton wasn't in front of Malik. You know what he did? He found him. Mm -hmm. He was looking for somebody to block. That sounds like a small detail. That makes all the difference in the world. There are a couple other things in a piece that's coming to Warchant.com that I put together re-watching the game about Malik McLean and the details he plays with. What is it underscore? It underscores buy-in. Mm -hmm. And that's what's critical for us moving forward. I think that uh, that's a guy that you can kind of just expect. Each week you watch Florida State football, he gets better. And that's always fun to watch. It's not always easy to identify guys who are capable of that in their first year. He's one of them. It's Jeff Cabot Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio and War Chant TV. One third of Americans over the age of 55 have less than 25,000 in savings heading into retirement, and 34% have no savings at all. Maximizing your Social Security benefits is going to be a significant part of planning for the road ahead. If this sounds like you, or maybe even a loved one, give me a call. I can help. I'm Craig Collins with Collins Income Tax Solutions, and I'm offering free consultations to anyone looking to learn how to maximize their Social Security benefits. You can find me online at Collins Income Tax Solutions, LLC.com. Barry knows cool. He's keeping you comfortable. Barry knows cool. You can 
Your home has been a place of great comfort. We can help you keep it that way. Berno Heating and Air is helping you get ready for summer with $1,500 off select new units, 0% financing for qualified buyers, plus worry-free maintenance plans. Learn more or schedule online at BarronOAC.com. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Berno Heating and Air today. For license CAC 1816 Welcome to Tallulah Talk After Hours, your home for all things CBD. Tonight, we're talking about the benefits of CBD personal lubricants, CBD massage oils, romantic CBD scented candles, chocolates, and even CBD bath bombs. Did you know CBD lubricants can lead to increased sensitivity, resulting in longer and stronger experiences? What's left to talk about? Get yours today at Tallulah CBD on Market Street and now open in Betterman Crossings. Thanks for listening to Tallulah Talk After Hours. When the forgotten poor are in need of healing, they wait for a ship unlike any other. Mercy Ships, a floating hospital staffed by volunteers, heroes of mercy who donate their time to save lives. Every human has the right to have a place at the table of the human race. If you could just see the smiles that you get when lives have been changed, then it would make it all worth it. To learn more about Heroes of Mercy, Go to mercyships.org. You went online to switch your car insurance to Progressive so you could save money. But then you saw a friend request from an old summer camp buddy. And now here you are, clicking through photos of his kickball team from 2011. Oh, looks like they won the championship that year. Then he moved to Tulsa. Oh, a new tattoo. Yes, they said it was easy to save hundreds on car insurance with Progressive, but they forgot about the rest of the Internet. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates national average savings by new customer surveyed who saved in 2019. If you weren't the owner of Gordo's and all those wonderful restaurants, Eddie, what would you be doing? You know, I, I think I'd want to be a, I'd want to be, I don't know what I'd want to be, a boat captain or a cowboy. You know how to use a, a lasso? No. You'd have to do that if you were a cowboy. Yeah, but I've never even been on a horse. It's not my place to be on a horse. I agree. And the horse thanks you. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. Jeff Cameron Show brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. be dead wrong we'll find out in about three drives i think this offensive line will be able to move the likes of a jacksonville state off the ball with a little bit more regularity which in turn should mean that even if travis is playing a ton of reps he should have quieter feet in the pocket right i hope really got to get to that place it's going to be important at some point because again i think he's going to have to just the very nature of this situation play quarterback in a really meaningful game and we're going to need him to be able to throw the ball we're going to need him to be able to consistently throw the ball from the pocket. And I I said before that I, I think my only disapp- – well, there's a couple of disappointing elements to the Notre Dame game, but not a lot. I, I walked away from that uh, feeling pretty good about things and that the team had improved a lot. But I was disappointed that he wasn't better from the pocket um, just because we've seen evidence of him as a passer and growth in camp, and it really didn't translate at all in this game. No, the interior pressure messed with his – his head a lot. Yeah. And and you know what else that they were really good at jumping the snap count. We've got to figure out how to how to vary that. I don't know if we always need to clap pre-snap and count down from a second and then let the ball go. I, I don't know what that is, but it was entirely predictable for that defense. And that really messed with things for the center, the interior guys, everybody. Yeah, I noticed that too. And I do uh, you know, I don't know what you do about that, right? I mean you see a lot of offenses do this. You see it in the NFL too that the clap is is here to stay, man, and I've never liked it. Yeah, me either. Me either. I've always thought, well, and then what you could do is obviously you, you tell your guys to hold their water, and it's sort of like, hey, I'm going to clap, but this time mm-hmm. it's going to be four seconds after I clap. Next right, time it's going to be one second after I clap. Inevitably, right? there's a false start on that, you know, because guys are just asked to be there forever because you might not even get to that position. You get to the line. Everybody sets up. You go to the line, uh, to the sideline, take a look for your check. Then you get set. 
Then we do this thing, and you know your offensive linemen have been in their position for 10, 15 seconds. That's it's, a lot to ask. It's exceedingly tough to hold hold your position there and still be quick off the ball and still be able and to still react. run yeah. up tempo if you get ahead of the chains. Yeah. It, that's that's a difficult ask, especially for when you don't have you know blue chippers from left tackle right tackle. I do think that um, I, I do feel like. They they did a better job in the second half of that though. Did you notice that they they yeah. weren't getting jumped nearly as bad? I'm not just talking about when McKenzie Milton came in. I'm I'm saying they did a better job of adjusting. They the did half. well across the board. I mean, you had e even in the first half after the Aaron snap that somehow we recovered between Jordan and Treshawn Ward. It's uh, Bavion Johnson that comes in and plays center. Snapping was still a problem, but is that the number one thing we both want to see this week? That they snap the ball. I don't want them to waste with, them this weekend. No, no. Save your good snaps no, for Wake. I'm just laughing, and I'm sitting here about thinking about all the things we have to iron out. There was the good, the bad. We've we've touched on all of them now, and you know it's a shortened week, and you're getting ready for this game, but it's a game you're heavily favored. And I thought, what do I really need to see improve? Because they say your your, your most improvement happens from week one to week two. It's cliche and all that, but it's often true. I'm thinking, well, what do I have to see that are surefire signs that they've cleaned some things up? Yeah, somebody who can snap the ball. Yeah consistently well yeah that's it's a very basic ask it's a ridiculous ask i want to see what the rotation is at guard this weekend too you know because it's going to mm -hmm. tell you a couple mm -hmm. things one about health yep. but then two about aptitude i mean i don't know dlt is our guy from trench talk but dante lucas was in there for an awful lot of snaps on sunday night is that about ramping up that's no, about Devontae? Health. well Notre Dame game's kind of a big one. That's I, frustrating. I would also tell you that, well, I mean, that's about health again, and then I think in time he may end up being pushed outside, meaning DLT may end up back yeah. at tackle again. According to Pro Football Focus, which we have access to, it, Darius Washington had an excellent day in, in a lot of regards as compared to Robert Scott, who had a rough day mm. in most regards. He, uh, he was caught slow-footed quite a few times. Yep, going to have to get faster, a lot faster. It is the summer of more life at Orange Theory Fitness. First month free. All you got to do is purchase the heart monitor. Uh, you're going to want to do that anyhow. It's a great tool, uh, and you can watch how much stronger you get and you watch your cardio grow. I know I do that. I love watching that. Interval training is the key to all of that. It's fun. They do all of that at Orange Theory Fitness. If you refer a friend uh, right now, you'll end up saving on your membership dues for the next three months. So now's the time to do it. You save a lot of money. If you've been thinking about going to Orange Theory, do it now before September 30th because those savings are huge and it's a great value. And uh, it goes till September the 30th. We'll come back and end up doing probables here. No, we got a probables right now. It's right now. Oh, beautiful. Go ahead. Cue it up. It's time for how you say with the pitching uh, probably. Sure would enjoy watching the Yankees collapse. Sure do like watching Toronto surge. Yeah, yeah. That wild card, card race is fun. In the, America. the Rays have already taken care of everything else. Even in the National League, you know, the battle for the second wild card spot between the Padres and, and Reds and maybe a team out of the East emerges. I'm mm. not – the Mets aren't, but yeah. You really have lost hope, huh? Well, yeah. Yeah, I have. <laughs> Uh, this is all brought to you by North Florida Payroll Services, locally owned for nearly 15 years, offering payroll and HR services, including full online applicant onboarding and integration into payroll. Save your company money and headache today. Head to NorthFloridaPayroll.com. They're already underway in St. Louis, Bush Stadium, Dodgers cards, 1-1, tied. Starters, Tony Gonzalez and Jake Woodford. That's correct. White Sox, A's. Ronaldo Lopez, Sean Manaya. We've got the Twins and the Indians, Andrew Albers, Cal Quantrill. Mets, Marlins. Here you go. You can pick up a bunch of wins against tomorrow. Lost last night. Oh. Two to one. Got four hit in ten innings. Tuffy. Yeah, it is. Marcus Stroman on the hill for the Mets. Jesus Lazardo on the hill for the Marlins. Kansas City and Baltimore, nobody cares. Carlos Hernandez and John Means. Still read the probables, though. I appreciate the professionalism. Got to do it. Rockies, Phillies, Antonio Sensatella, who pitches every night for the Rockies, if you didn't know. Tough ask. I like this guy. Ranger Suarez. Blue Jays, Yankees, Jose Barrios, and Nestor Cortez. Let's go, Blue Jays. Everybody say it with me. Let's go, Blue Jays. Screw you, Yankees. 
be at it to the end. You see the Orioles number last night? No. Under 5,000 people in attendance. That organization has tragically butchered the greatness and tradition of Orioles baseball. A franchise that led the way by building Camden Yards, which became the blueprint for the rest of Major League Baseball to go back to old school, charming stadiums. And now, a footnote. Laughable. What are they lose? 120? How many, how many lost? Where are the Orioles at? The Orioles. They're so bad, Gary Thorne gave up on them. The Orioles have won 45 games. September the 9th. Nats, Braves, Eric Feedy, and Haskar Noah. And that is a look at those that shall reside on the bump. Right at the end. That is pretty good. Timed it so well. That is well done. Uh, I'm ready for playoff baseball. I'm ready for that moment when you uh, wake up that one day and you realize, oh, my God, I've got the NFL, I've got college football, and I've got playoff baseball all today. That's one of my favorite days of the year. Yeah, when they do the quadruple header in that first round of yeah, the division series. Yeah, you get pumped. You get 12, 3, 5, 30, and 8. Yeah. Yeah, those are good times. It never gets old, man. I uh, That part of it's good. And and baseball in the second half of the season has hit a home run. Excuse the pie. That's what they've done. They've done a good job with this because the rules changes have affected uh, the game in a positive way. There's a lot more action. That is quantifiable. We can see that in the numbers now. There are fewer strikeouts, more hits, more runs. Uh, more hard hit baseballs as well. Uh, not just home runs, but just balls put in play. I, I, might we be headed towards a time in which uh, the hit and run becomes a thing again? That would be nice. First to third is a beautiful thing. Bringing triples back, stolen base. I don't know if you're ever going to get stolen bases the way we did before. It's just it doesn't seem like there's value to it. But I would like to see the athleticism of the players more than just watch City League softball. Yeah, put guys in motion, man. Let's go. The overshift and the three true outcomes is City League softball. Yeah, it's better now, but it could still be better. You're right. They could add to this. You want them to uh, forbid the shift. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. You got to be on the other side. You have to have two players on either side of the bag as the pitch is being delivered. So you can shift, but it can't be as... No, you can't just be like hanging out, having a picnic in right field, you know, outside the infield dirt. It's ridiculous. Welcome back, National Football League tonight. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Dallas Cowboys. I should say the reigning Super Bowl champion, Tampa Bay Buccaneers against the Dallas Cowboys. And oh, (laughs) my friend, hello. Yeah, and oh, by the way, uh, that game can be heard here on 93.3 Real Talk Radio. So if for some reason... You have uh, to work late. You're running around, whatever it is you might be doing. Maybe you got a honey to do list late on a Thursday. It's quite the double header, though, because you could do the recruiting chat at 6 p.m. right here on War Chant TV. And then you got the Buccaneers game with the pregame show and Gene and Dave Moore and the crew taking you through all that. You may get uh, that question from Jerry about uh, picking off recruits at linebacker <laughs> right. from LSU yeah. in Miami, right? Somebody's going to do it. So if you had to rank confidence level mm. of those picks you offered out. Oh, yeah. yeah. The most confident. Well, you want me to do this at the end here? Most confident Yeah, pick? just a little gift for the people on the way out. Uh, Since you told them about a dead giraffe and all, got to give them something positive. Most confident. I feel really good about Air Force minus six against Navy. That's what you feel the most I feel good very about. good about that pick, Tom. If you're watching on the chat, you're laughing because that is good. Uh, <laughs> you can just keep it up there. That's too that good. better be there forever. Man. <laughs> Save that. Look at him. <laughs> McConaughey is having himself a drag. Yeah, it's a drag. He is serious. He's also just saw something that is startling or exciting or both or disconcerting, important. We need that for our social media feeds, too, as like an upset watch. Mm, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Upset watch. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on in Columbus? <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> What is going on here? Well, that is all of us, by the way. That is all of us. That picture is every one of us at any number of moments through the last two years as our inclination to be sporting guys uh, and gals. You know what that was, though? That was me watching uh, Tom Brady to Scotty Miller. At Lambo, 
just before halftime. Like, that could work. <laughs> might work. I wish you'd been in my living room when that happened because I saw the matchup and I didn't I didn't see the safety anywhere near. And I went, my kids are sitting next to me and I jump up. I go, that's going to work. Have a great night. Peace. Peace.